Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review video here at Miriam Pianos on YouTube. My name is Stu Harrison and today we are coming to you from the Robert Lowry showroom in downtown Toronto, Canada. And today we are going to be reviewing Schimmel's C189 piano. This is an all made in Germany, six foot piano, had many requests to review this instrument and so we finally have a chance to do so. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on YouTube, we would really love it if you subscribed, hit that notification bell so that you'll hear all about future videos as they come out. Uh, feel free to leave a comment as well. We really enjoy the interaction and hearing what you thought of the video. So without further ado, let's get started with the C189 right away. So the C189 is part of Schimmel's classic series, and this is differentiated quite clearly from their concert series in so many different ways. Um, but in the most general sense, the classic piano, and Schimmel I think talks about this in the Piano Buyer Guide, and, and it's really true, uh, we're looking at a pretty traditional German piano design executed very well. Uh, there aren't going to be too many features about the classic that on their own on paper uh, draw very much attention. There's, you know, the, the bridging is fairly traditional. The way that the duplex is done is pretty traditional. The rim is pretty traditional. Um, but uh, it's done at a very high level and particularly the scaling and the shaping of the soundboard, tapering of the soundboard, all of that stuff uh, is executed really at about the highest level that any piano manufacturer is doing. So in a lot of ways, you're looking at a fairly uh, typical proven design that you're seeing throughout many different companies in, in a lot of ways, uh, but done at a very high level and the scaling in particular uh, is, you know, is really refined uh, with the use of a lot of computer design. That's something that Schimmel as a company has been focusing on for quite a while is the use of modern technology to improve the scales, to improve just the efficiency of the sound that the piano is producing. And I mentioned this in a few other of the Schimmel videos, but in, in a lot of ways, Schimmel kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Kauai of Germany. It's a company that's just constantly pushing, constantly innovating, uh, putting lots of new tech in the instruments and really just not satisfied to sit on their laurels. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're quite used to Kauai pushing technology in the areas of action, uh, in, you know, in the areas of wood conditioning and, and some of their bridge technology is, is really quite uh, interesting and remarkable. Uh, on the Schimmel stuff, really their scale designs uh, and a lot of the way in which their rim constructions are done on the classics are, are great. Uh, of course, when we hit that concert series, then we get into all sorts of uh, quite interesting and, and very innovative design elements that, that contribute to uh, a different playing experience. So on the, on the 189, this is going to be about a 6263 uh, piano. And there are uh, the 169 sits below this, uh, and then there's a few models above it in terms of size in the classic line. Um, the way in which uh, the piano is scaled uh, is pretty typical. It sort of goes from a uh, tricord steel strings down to about uh, you know C3 uh, or uh, I guess C2, depending on which numbering system you're using. The C below middle C. Uh, and then it switches over to bichord copper. And then finally, the last six or seven uh, notes on here uh, are uh, single string uh, copper. Uh, so what makes this different then from any of the other German pianos that are coming out in this price range? Because this is going to be very similar to say a Bechstein Academy uh, in terms of price range. Uh, and uh, from a spec standpoint, really difficult to differentiate what Schimmel's doing here uh, versus the Bechstein. Well, one of them is the wide tail. Uh, and you can see this 
uh, definitely on the 189. The tail on this is quite a bit wider than what you're going to find, and it actually creates the illusion that the piano is a little bit shorter uh, than it actually is. Uh, so the wide tails, which you find on both the Schimmel Classic and Concert, just means there's more real estate on that soundboard and you can get that bass bridge pushed even further back. So for the size of the instrument, you wind up with longer bass strings and just more uh, square inchage, square footage, whatever we want to say, uh, on the soundboard. Uh, and it's very, very easy to tell, especially looking from the back of the piano when you're, when you're dealing with that uh, wider tail uh, design. So really lots of nice body in the bass. Another thing that the, uh, the computer-aided scaling has done, and this is something that I really noticed as well on the Shigeru Kawais, uh, is that the sustain is well above average. Uh, one of, you know, I think of any aspect that the improvement in scaling that computers have contributed to piano design, uh, definitely uh, just the sheer amount of sustain uh, time is, is one of the most obvious benefits uh, that players have received. Uh, you know, the soundboard's able to just preserve that energy that much longer. It doesn't take as much energy to activate the soundboard. And you're getting this, you know, with the Shimmel for sure. Uh, the Classic has duplex scaling, uh, meaning that that area of the string on the back half of the bridge is allowed to be active. You know, um, there's sort of a sympathetic resonance that occurs on those strings. Doesn't mean that uh, the vibration is actually traveling through the bridge. It's more like uh, those strings are just there uh, to sympathetically resonate uh, with any of the harmonics that are occurring through the piano. Um, and there is a non-tuned uh, front duplex as well. Uh... And this is one of the most interesting differences between the classic and the concert. The classic treble is stronger in my opinion, than you actually get on the concert. So this is neither a good or a bad thing. It's just this is a lot closer to what I would expect from a treble out of, say, a Steinway design, Kawhi design, Yamaha design, uh, where it's not a perfectly in tune, uh, you know, front duplex, and the back duplex might be, you know, well tuned, but maybe not perfectly tuned. So you get that little bit of a mixture effect, like on an organ, those slightly out of tune upper harmonics, and it just creates something that's a much punchier uh, and cuts through. It's just a stronger treble. Whereas on the concert, you've got tuned front and rear duplex, so there's less of these uh, slightly out of tune harmonics, and you get this mo more thickness or more air around the treble, but it's not going to cut or it's not going to punch quite as hard. So it's a very different effect uh, that one is getting on this classic piano. Schimmel uses Renner actions, um, and you know they regulate them really finely at the factory. Uh, they are also using uh, Renner hammers, and, and so this is going to be a very familiar feel to people who are already used to other European pianos. Uh, I think the key dip on it uh, feels pretty much down the middle. It doesn't feel deep or shallow, uh, and you know, very, very similar to what I would expect out of, say, a Bechstein, or maybe even a Grotrian uh, Grand. Thank you.
Yeah. Um, the mid-range of the piano, because we've talked about the bass, we've talked about the treble. There is, uh, certainly there's less of an upper shimmer that you get out of the mid-range on the Schimmel Classic. Um, but yet there's still a very nice kind of bloom and a, and a bell uh, on the attack. There's just fewer upper partials coming out of that mid-range. The Schimmel cabinet is something that they have, put, you know, obviously focused on. Uh, the inlays are really gorgeous. Uh, the uh, polyester and even the very subtle uh, styling accents on the instrument, um, such as the pedals, the way they've done the gables, uh, they're very distinctive, uh, and it just gives you that sense that it's a nice blend of both the traditional uh, look as well as some very, very contemporary influences on the body of the instrument. Schimmels are very uh, solidly built. The quality control on these uh, is exceptional, um, you know, as I've already mentioned. Another critical difference between, say, the classic and the concert, and if you're also looking at instruments that are about in this price range, let's say uh, the Shigeru Kawai might be on your list. Let's say you're looking at um, a New York Steinway, uh, you might be taking a peek at like a Souter, you know, something in that range. Um, the key length or the key stick length is, is something that's definitely a critical difference. Uh, this is a pretty uh, conventional key stick length or, or action size for a six foot piano. Um, if we look at the six foot version on the concert side, they've got a full uh, concert grand action in there. So there's like a significant difference uh, in the length of the key sticks on the concert version of this, which is really uh, the K195. Uh, uh, it's exactly the same instrument, the, um, and the scaling is exactly the same. The major difference is that the body is now six or seven centimeters uh, longer, and that's entirely because of the accommodation that they've had to do uh, for that extra key stick length. So you certainly feel a major feel, uh, you know, there's, there feel a major feel difference. You detect a major feel difference between these two instruments, uh, and it's primarily, entirely, because of that key stick length. Um, there's going to be a difference in the amount of time that they're spending finishing the instruments off in the factory as well. Although I must say that the Schimmel Classic and Concert both come in incredibly well regulated. These are one of those handful of instruments that you can pretty much crack open right out of the crate after it's been on the ocean for you know many weeks uh, and it's virtually perfect. So uh, anyway, very favorable impressions of this uh, you know of this piano uh, uh, in terms of just how um, in a good way how predictable it is. Uh, you know it's a conventional design but with really an enhanced bass because of that wide tail. It's got a nice uh, strong treble very similar to what I would expect but overall as you just really lay into the instrument you feel this solidness and this connectedness and this activation of the whole rim of the instrument uh, that is not very common especially uh, in this price range. And it's got a much clearer and it's a, it's a uh, slightly sharper and a, a brighter tone than what you would find out of some of the other comparable pianos in this range. And so it's also a great contrast. If you are somebody who enjoys a slightly brighter German sound, the Schimmel is like right up your alley. So I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about the C189 and just the Schimmel Classic Grand Series uh, generally. Would encourage you to check out some of the other uh, Schimmel uh, videos that we have on the channel, as well as of course, all the stuff we have from virtually every major manufacturer. It's a great place uh, to start your piano shopping and in some cases it might even be a helpful friend right at the end of your piano shopping for one last final perspective. Uh, if it's the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate it if you also subscribed. We love uh, getting to know our viewers through your comments, uh, become part of our community of piano enthusiasts, piano lovers, uh, 
Uh, and we do try and get to as many of those comments as we possibly can. So, my name is Stu Harrison. You have been watching the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. We are coming to you from the Robert Lowry showroom in downtown Toronto, Canada. We hope to see you back for more videos. Have yourself a great day. Sun is right.